Good Vibrations, which of course is the Beach Boys song, but Good Vibrations is the name of a movie which is basically the story of Terry Hooley, Belfast's so-called godfather of punk. Um, essentially, the it's the story of somebody who is uh, running a, a record store and uh, you know, famously sort of non-sectarian uh, record shop in the, in the middle of troubled Belfast. He's running discos in which he's playing reggae records to an audience of one person. And he suddenly has an epiphany at a Rudy gig when he realises that in fact the future is punk rock. Here's a clip. Boys, where have you been all my life? Do we know you? Terry Hilly, I run a record shop on that big time song. Big time, you ain't no friend. I want that in my shop. You can want all you like. Uh-huh. You mean you haven't recorded it? <laughs> recorded it? Aye. Who's gonna come to Belfast to sign us? It's just the way it is. We don't care. Sick, raise your expectations. I'll do it. I'll put it on. You're pissed. So what? I'll put that record out. How? I don't know. How hard can it be? Whatever you think, man. I'll be in touch next week, fellas. You're making a record. And indeed, they are. So what happens is he starts making records completely sort of on a wing and a prayer. He doesn't have, he has a fantastically hippie-ish sense of the unimportance of money. And in fact, the way the story plays out is that we see on the one hand, Terry Hooley and his dreams of, you know, of music as this great, fantastic uniting force that will change the world. On the other hand, total disregard for anything like finance and uh, looking after the members of his family who are off doing important things like having children whilst he is doing all this stuff. So, and it's Richard Dormer who plays uh, Terry Hooley. Then of course, what happens is in to his uh, sphere of consciousness comes the undertones and he agrees to record the undertones and the whole thing essentially builds up to the recording of Teenage Kicks which then became uh, as I think everybody of our age would know John Peel's favourite record of ever. Now the the really interesting thing about the film is this. It's made in a very low budget, it's really really well played and it is made with real heart and soul. I love pop movies when they get it right, most of the time they get it wrong. The most difficult thing to do in a pop movie is to put on screen the idea of why it is that a particular record, a particular sound, a particular moment, a particular movement, a particular band is so right. I mean, pop culture is very, very hard to capture. And that's why so many music magazines aren't great. And when you come across a great one, I mean, you were mourning the decline of word recently. Mm -hmm. When you come across great rock writing, you go, wow, that's it's terrific. It's like reading somebody writing beautifully about film, and uh, you know, and which is something I've never managed to do. But people who are great, great writers about film or great writers about rock music, it's great. If somebody can manage to make a film that captures a moment, captures you know a, a particular moment of pop culture perfectly, it's a really special thing. And there is, there is amidst all the things that there are to like about Good Vibrations, that it, as I said, it's a film with real heart, it's a film which cares about its characters, it's a film which does beautiful little thumbnail sketches, which gets around the difficulty of having to have people walk on in wigs and stick on beards saying, hello, I'm John Peel, which is the chubby hum thing, which basically deflates most problems. It has at the centre of it the the arrival of Teenage Kicks, and it is there's a sequence in which we get to hear Teenage Kicks finally being played, which for me was one of the best sequences I've seen in a movie in a very, very long time. And I did the thing that the movie wanted me to do was I just cried. I mean, literally tingles up the spine, goosebumps on you know on the flesh. Did it sound? Did it sound like the real thing? No, no, it is the real thing. They play they play the record of it, but it's to do with the playing the record of it, and that's the real genius. Somebody who can make a cinematic moment out of somebody playing a record is really something. And actually, that moment is talismanic for what's right about the rest of the film. I feel about this film the same way as I did about Made in Dagenham which is that it's a film which tells a story, a true story, a real story, with just the right no amount of invention, just the right amount of fairy tale dust, just the right amount of, you know, basically schmoozing and smoothing the, 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 the edges of the story in order to make the story Making work. Making stuff up. Well, making stuff up is not quite the right phrase. And usually if you'd use the right phrase, I would say, that's interesting, you've said it well there, but but you haven't. It's oh, the... I'm sorry, but I haven't seen the film. No, I know you haven't, but you need to see the film. And the reason you need to see it, you will love it. You will love it in the same way that I, I mean, obviously, you know, you have, you're a you know, great music DJ. You remember all this stuff happening. Remember? Thanks, great mate. Thank you. Thanks, great mate. Lovely. And here's Beckman Turner Overdrive. But honestly... We might start with that today in an hour. What, Teenage Kicks? Might do. No, Backman Turner. Oh, I don't know. Start with Teenage Kicks. Start with Teenage Kicks. But the point about I'm not saying this is a great film because Teenage Kicks is a great record. What I'm saying is it's a great film because it's a film that manages to remind you what it is about hearing Teenage Kicks for the first time that makes you go, wow, the world is better. Also, of course, Outcast in there. And I mean, there are, I mean, I've got 
bunch of outcast records from ages and ages ago that were up in the loft that at the end of having seen Good Vibrations, I went up and got them down and played them all again, which I haven't, you know, they've been up in the loft since since we moved into the house. And maybe the fact that One Direction have included their version of uh, Teenage Kicks into the... I haven't heard that. Well, it's sort of, it's in their comic relief tune. So it's there, you know, and now, so it has, a, you, you'll be able to say to your children and grandchildren, here you are, kids, this is what it sounded like. Yeah, in the but, first place. but more importantly, and I, as I keep saying, I'm not saying you need to see this because it's got a great, because that's a great record. You need to see it because it's a really, really good film that really cleverly captures what it is about pop culture when it gets you right. And it, it captures a moment. And I think it will work for any audience, for a younger audience who didn't grow up, you know, with with with, with teenage kicks. It's just it's a charming film with, as I said, with real heart and soul. And I cried twice. Really? Yes. A double tear joker. A double tear joker. But you know, tears of joy. Tears of tears of tears of, you know, proper hooray, hurrah. And I feel really good about it. I I I I loved it. I just loved it. Is it gonna be an easy thing to see? I hope so. I hope it's going to get a thoroughly wide release because it absolutely deserves to. Is it better than ABBA the movie? Most things in the world are better than ABBA the movie. Is it better than Slade in Flame? No. Sure. How 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 short is it then? It's it's about the same length as Slade in Flame. But no, you... no, no. How how short does oh, it Oh, how fall? short is it? Obviously, okay, well, if Slade in Flame is Citizen Kane, Never Too Young to Rock is Exorcist to the Heretic. It's it's close. It's, it's much much close. But then that's that's really unfair saying is well, because you know what I think about. Citizen. I'll tell you what it's as good as. I'll tell you what it's as good as. It's as good as the Buddy Holly story, and I really like the Buddy Holly story.